Hello, Cow Creek Community Church. It's good to be with you today. It's been over a month, and it feels, yes, a little weird, because I have not seen most of you in all this time, and so our um, our normal church life has definitely been interrupted. But I'm excited to, to share something with you today, and I hope this is a reality already for you. I know it is for, for many of you, because I've had some conversations with you, and um, so I know this is true, but I just want to share a little bit from Colossians today with you on setting your minds on things that are above, uh, being spiritually minded. And in order to start that, I just wanted to read from Romans 13 verse 14 with a very similar thought. Uh, Paul says this, but put on the Lord Jesus Christ and make no provision for the flesh to gratify its desires. So you see there an active role that we have in putting on Christ. And the opposite of that would be making provision for the flesh and fulfilling the desires that are in the flesh. And so what I really want to emphasize, though, in regard to this is the aspect of setting our minds on Christ. Paul, in the book of Colossians, which is about the preeminence of Christ, absolutely uh, just a wonderful book on the richness of who Christ is, who we are in Christ, what He has for us, and uh, the joy of the new life we have in Christ among each other as a local body. And so Paul... um, is uh, writing to a church that he has not personally visited, but he has uh, lots of information about this church from a man named Epaphras. And so he gives this great theological statement about Jesus Christ himself portraying the preeminence of Christ in Colossians chapter 1. And then at the end of chapter 1, he talks about how that he and his ministry team uh, struggle with all the might that God himself gives them to present everyone mature in Christ. They do this by the proclamation of Christ continually. And then he uh, expresses that part of his struggle is that these Colossian believers, that their hearts may be encouraged, being knit together in love to reach all the riches of full assurance of understanding and the knowledge of God's mystery, which is Christ, in whom are hidden all the treasures of wisdom and knowledge. So Paul lays out there that everything we have in, is in Christ, who is an infinite resource for us. And as the letter moves forward, he begins to e- explain what happened when, when we believed in Christ, that is, we were united with Christ, we died with Christ, we were buried with Christ, we were raised with Christ. And so everything that Paul has to tell believers is rooted in that truth. And this is true of us. If we have repented and placed our faith in Christ, then He has given us access to these resources. And so in light of that, in Colossians 3, verse 1, He says this, If then you have been raised with Christ, again, our union with Him, seek the things that are above where Christ is, seated at the right hand of God. Verse 2, he says it very similar, set your mind on things that are above, not on things that are on earth. For you have died, and your life is hidden with Christ in God. When Christ, who is your life, appears, then you also will appear with Him in glory. But what I want to emphasize here is just that The two ways he says this, seek the things that are above, where Christ is, seated at the right hand of God. Set your minds on things that are above. Beloved, we have, during this time period, an outstanding opportunity to carry this out. None of us could have anticipated that we were going to go into this. And certainly none of us could have anticipated all the implications of it. And we obviously don't know when it's going to end. But there could be a temptation during this time period to set our minds on things of the earth. We're not around each other. You're not hearing as much teaching from your your leaders. We're not in home fellowship groups together. Um, We're not asking each other questions as we normally would be when we're interacting. We're not praying for each other in person over needs. So there could be a temptation to begin to drift and to be 
setting our thinking on things that are on the earth. Like Pastor Jeremy has already talked to us about several times, we could be tempted to watch a lot of Netflix, to just uh, kind of mindlessly try to get the, the time to go by without uh, being too bored. But in reality, we've been given a gift. Because I do believe that um, Satan can use our busy lives as a distraction from this very truth, setting our minds on things that are above, seeking the things that are above. Even if, it's, if, even if we're involved in busy ministry, Satan knows how to use our busyness to distract us from this main pursuit. And what's really neat about this is Paul doesn't just say, set your mind on things that are above. He says, where Christ is. And we are with Him. Spiritually, we are with Christ. And he roots that in the fact that, number one, if you have been raised with Christ, and then in verse 3 he says, you died with Christ. So our old identity has already been buried. It, it, it died with Christ, was buried with Him, and we have this new identity that he appeals to in verse 10 of chapter 3, that we put on the new self, which is being renewed in knowledge after the image of its creator. So we have a new identity, a new self, and that is who we are in Christ. So in that core truth that we've been united with Christ, Paul exhorts us, pursue the things that are above. That is to say, pursue spiritual things. So I hope that that's what you're doing. And if you have not been, per, let's just for a second imagine that the second half of verse 2 is what's characterized you, that you actually have been setting your mind on things of the earth. Well, this time is not totally gone. And so it would not be a wasted opportunity. And so I just encourage you, use this time. Brothers and sisters, this is an excellent opportunity for us to really dig into the Scriptures. And we've been mentioning that as your elders repeatedly but let me just give you some practical ways that this could work out for you um, and that is you could really be seeking to understand theology better and when I when I say that I don't mean it's just some academic exercise that's not theology true theology is the study of God himself and studying God leads to worship and if those two are not married, then that's obviously not pursuing the things that are above. But studying, um, you could go through the Psalms with just an eye to see the character of God. God, who are you? As I look at what the psalmist says again and again, who are you? Or, or Christ himself. You could take um, in Colossians 1, just earlier, verses 15 through 20, and really meditate on what does Paul say about Jesus Christ. There's enough in those six verses there to just blow your mind and to cause so much worship to arise in your heart. So that would be setting your mind on things that are above. You could get a really good book that talks about these things and dig into that. So looking into the scriptures, looking into some really good theology book right now would be setting your minds on the th things that are above. Uh, prayer. We all know of many more needs, I think. Um, I know I certainly am aware of many more needs than I normally have been. And so this has been a good time for me to just pause and, and to spend more time in prayer than I normally have, should have been, but do not. But given this opportunity, it has certainly forced me to do that. And not only that, but prayer for our own souls and how we interact with what's going on around us. Prayer for when we're reading the Word. Prayer for when we're studying theology, studying God Himself, studying Christ. But it's also an opportunity to be reaching out to others. Because we have to be intentional to reach out to others right now. It's very easy to be just totally thinking about ourselves as we're locked in the walls of our home or um, obviously, some of you are still working and you're out among the public more. But for some of us, it would be very easy for us to just become self-focused. So this would be an opportunity and we're set, as we're setting our minds on things that are above, being spiritually minded, to think, how can I reach out to others? That could move into evangelism, not just reaching out to those who are in our body uh, and asking them how they're doing, praying for them, 
but evangelism. I know that you have people on your heart that you have either communicated the gospel to in the past or you've been wanting to for a long time. This will be a good opportunity. Ask the Lord to help you find a, a, a way to engage in a spiritual conversation about their eternal souls. But also singing. This is an excellent time to sing together as a family. Hey, you don't have to be musical. There's so much stuff on the internet right now, some good music. We've been sending some stuff out. But I know um, any of the songs that we sing on uh, Sunday mornings normally, sing those together as a family. The reason we are careful about the songs we choose in our worship service is because they have to be centered in what God has already said about Himself, what is true of Him, what is true in relationship to us and our relation to Him. So that would be excellent opportunities to even be growing in the things that we were talking about, theology and the Word, just by singing. Not uh, just reading Scripture, but meditating on Scripture. That is a lost, I want to say art, but it's a, a lost practice in our generation, we're so just scattered everywhere, but it's, it's good for us to pause and reflect on the truths of Scripture. So, for example, in Colossians 3, verses 1 through 4, to really think that through, God, what would this look like in my life if I began seeking the things that are above? If I began setting my mind on things that are above and not on the things of the earth, how would my life be transformed if the majority of my time were more intentional? I'm not talking about when you're working. Yes, you can do it then or, or when you've got tasks to do, but just setting aside time to meditate on the Lord and, and the things of the Lord. But also practically working through personal holiness, letting this be an opportunity to address some uh, nagging sin in your life. We all have them, areas of weakness or areas that we've let slide. But to just take the time to what, what used to be a more common terminology, to mortify sin. That is to put it to death. That's biblical. Uh, as a matter of fact, right here in Colossians 3 verse 5, that's the natural outflow of this kind of perspective. Paul says, put to death, therefore, what is earthly in you. And he lists a bunch of sins there. So we wouldn't want to be uh, believers that have cut out these sections of Scripture, but rather when we set our minds on spiritual things, it naturally leads us to personal holiness, to pursuing that. Or perhaps working through things that might be hindering you spiritually. And if Hebrews 12 uh, verses 1 through 2, it talks about we all have a race set before us and we're to run that. And... Um, there's excess baggage and then sin that he lists there that can hinder our race. Looking to Jesus so that we can do this. Are there things that you need to think through that might be hindering you spiritually? So if, if during this time you found yourself much weaker spiritually, that might be a clue that maybe I've got some things in my life that need to go so that I will have more concentrated emphasis on the things that are above. And so that's not a uh, negative comment to you. Just be a, a checkpoint for you to look into your life. I've had to do this with my own life, and so it's not uncommon for us to have to do this. But as we, as we think about setting our things on the, mind, on the things that are above, uh, set our minds on things above, what would that look like? Well, I believe it will look like exactly what Paul commends this church in Colossae that he'd never visited, but learned about from Epaphras. And he said this in Colossians 1 verses 9 and following. He said, And so from the day we heard, we have not ceased to pray for you, asking that you may be filled with the knowledge of His will in all spiritual wisdom and understanding. Yes, that's what we're looking for. So as to walk in a manner worthy of the Lord. This is what happens when we set our minds on things above. We begin to walk in a, a manner that's more consistent with the gospel. Fully pleasing to Him, bearing fruit in every good work and increasing in the knowledge of God. May you be strengthened with all power according to His glorious might for all endurance and patience with joy, giving thanks to the Father who has qualified you to share in the inheritance of the saints in light. So when we look at that 
at the, well, was at the beginning of the letter uh, to Colossae, but that's actually also the result of setting our minds on things above where Christ is seated at the right hand of God, is that we grow in those qualities. So I pray that this will be an encouragement for you, regardless of how it's been going up until now or, uh, or not. But that going forward, we because again, we don't obviously know how long this is going to last, but that we will really take this as a gift from the Lord. Thank you that I can put a pause in my busy life and really think on spiritual things and let it not end here. But may we be so transformed on the other side of this that we are just geared and ready to serve kingdom purposes and whatever new ways are going to come out of this on the other side. All right. Well, God bless you and uh, look forward to seeing you very soon.